Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to apply that general method of finding the inverse of a matrix to a 3 by 3 matrix. So again, the approach is that we have some sort of matrix. Here's the 3 by 3. We want to find the inverse of the matrix. And the approach is that we take the matrix and augment it with the identity matrix, then use the Gaussian method of elimination to turn the left side of the matrix into the identity matrix, which will cause the right side of the matrix to turn into the inverse of the original matrix. So we take the matrix here, put it on the left side, and augment it with the identity matrix. And now we apply the Gaussian method of elimination to turn the left side into the identity matrix. And here we'll end up with the inverse of the matrix. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is turn this into a 1. We can do that by taking the first row and replacing it by 1 half times the first row, simply multiplying the first row by 1 half. And when we do that, we get the following matrix. So the top matrix becomes a 1, a 2, a 1 half, 1 half, 0, and 0. The second row stays the same. And the third row stays the same. All right, that's our first step. That was easy. Second step, we're going to take the 1 here on the first row and use it to turn this into a 0 and to turn this into a 0, which means I'm going to take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is 1, times the row with the 1 in it and adding it to the second row. We take the third row and replace it by the negative of this number, which is a minus 1, times the row with the 1 in it and adding it to the third row. That will cause these two to become zeros. Of course, we have to calculate what all the other elements will be in those two rows. So then we end up with the following matrix. Notice the first row does not change. We still end up with a 1, a 2, a 1 half, 1 half, 0, and 0. But here this will become a 0 because 1 times 1 is 1, added to negative 1 gives a 0. 1 times 2 is 2, added to 1 gives me a 3. 1 times a half is a half added to negative 1 gives me a minus 1 half. 1 times 1 half is 1 half added to 0 is 1 half. 1 times 0 is 0 added to 1 is 1. 1 times 0 added to 0 is 0. All right, third row, it's negative 1 times r1 added to row 3. So negative 1 times this added to that gives me 0. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 added to 4 gives me a 2. Negative 1 times 1 half is negative 1 half added to 0 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half, oh, negative 1 times 1 half is negative 1 half added to 0 is negative 1 half. Here nothing changes, and here that remains a 1 as well. All right, so now we have the first column, 1 and all zeros. Now I take this, and I want to turn that into a 1. To do that, I take the, third, the second row and replace it by 1 third the second row. So you see that we end up with some fractions, but so far they're not too bad. Okay, when we do that, we, have, we get the following matrix. So we see that the first row does not change. So this is a 1, a 2, a 1 half, a 1 half, a 0, and a 0. The third row doesn't change, so that remains at 0, 2, a negative 1 half, a negative 1 half, a 0, and a 1. The only thing that does change is the second row. We divide everything by 3, so we get a 0, a 1, we get a minus 1 sixth, we get a 1 sixth, we get a 1 third, and we get a 0. So now we have this as a 1, which will allow us to turn this into a 0 and allow us to turn that into a 0. So the way we do that is we take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, negative 2, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the first row. That's row number 2, because that's where the row, the row with the 1 is. And the third row will be replaced by the negative of this number, times the row with the 1 in it, adding it to the third row. And when we do that, we get the following matrix. Notice in this case, the second row doesn't change. So we have a 0, a 1, a minus 1 sixth, a positive 1 sixth, a 1 third, and a 0. The first column is still 1, 0, 0. The second column, this will turn into 0, and that will turn into 0. So negative 2 times r2. So negative 2 times a 1 is a negative 2. Added to 2 is a 0. Negative 2 times this will give us a positive 1 third. Added to 1 half, that gives us a 5 sixth. Negative 2 times a 1 sixth is a negative third. Added to 1 half gives me a positive 1. 1 sixth. 
Let's see. Let me make sure that is true. So what do I do here? So I have a negative 2 times this. That is a minus 1 third added to a 1 half. That is equal to minus 2 sixths plus 3 sixths, which is 1 sixth. Yep, yep. I just want to make sure I got that right. All right. So continuing, so we have a negative 2 times 1 third is a negative 2 thirds. Added to that gives me a negative 2 thirds. And of course, that stays as a 0. We do the same for the third row. So negative 2 times 1 added to 2 gives me 0. Negative 2 times a negative 1 6 gives me a positive 1 third. Added to a negative 1 half, that gives me a minus 1 6. Negative 2 times a 1 6 is negative 1 third. Add to negative 1 fifth is a negative 5 6. Negative 2 times a third is negative 2 thirds. Add it to 0. And here nothing changes. All right, we're getting closer. Now we have taken care of the first two columns. Now we need to move on to the third column, which means we want to turn this into a 1. We can do that by taking the third row and replacing it by multiplying negative 6 times the third row. So multiply the whole row by negative 6, and they'll turn that into a positive 1. OK, when we do that, we get the following results. Notice the first row doesn't change, so I have 1, 0, 5 sixteenths, 1 sixth, negative 2 thirds, and 0. 0, 1, negative 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 third, and 0. And the third row, multiply everything by minus 1 sixth, we get 0, 0, 1. This becomes a positive 5, and that becomes, this will be a minus 4 sixth, Multiply times minus 6, that will give us a positive 4, and this will be a minus 6. All right, hang in there, we're almost there. Now we have ones across the diagonal, the only thing left to do is to get, turn this into a 0, and to turn that into a 0. We can accomplish that by taking the first row, R1, and replacing it by the negative of that number, and of course that's, this should be 5 6, not 5 16 all right, so taking that first row and taking the negative of that number, which is negative 5 6, multiplying times the row with the one end, which in this case is the third row, and adding it to the first row. We do the same with the second row. We take the negative of that number, which is a positive 1 6, times the third row, that's the row with the one in it, and adding it to the second row. All right, that will turn these two elements into zeros, so let's see what the final result is. So now we have a matrix that looks like this. What doesn't change is the third row. So I have a 0, a 0, a 1, a 5, a 4, and a negative 6. The first column doesn't change. The second column doesn't change. All right, so now we're ready to change the elements in the first row. Minus 5, 6 times 1 is a minus 5, 6. Add to 5, 6. That gives me the 0. Minus 5, 6 times this. That would be a minus 25 sixth. Add 1 sixth, that would be minus 24 sixths. Minus 24 divided by 6 is a minus 4. Okay, minus 5 sixths times the third row. So minus 5 sixths times this is a minus 20 sixths. Minus 4 sixths is minus 24 sixths. 24 divided by 6 is 4, that would be a minus 4. All right, and finally, minus 5 sixths times this. The 6 is canceled out, I get a positive 5, add it to 0, gives me a positive 5. All right, one row left to go. 1 6 times the third row. So 1 6 times 1 is 1 6, add to minus 1 6, that is a 0. 1 6 times 5 is 5 6, add it to 1 6, give me 6 6, that is 1. Oh, let me see if that did, did that right. Yes, okay, it's a positive 1 6. All right, next. 1 6 times 4 is 4 6, adding it to 2 6 is 6 6, so that would also become a 1. And finally, 1 6 times a minus 6 is a minus 1, times 0, or add a 0 is a minus 1. And here we have the inverse of our original matrix. So therefore we can say that if A is equal to this, then the inverse of the matrix, A inverse, is equal to a minus 4, minus 4, 5, a 1, 1, negative 1, a 5, a 4, and a minus 6. And that's how we do that. Now, 
yes, I agree, this is kind of a lengthy process. And yes, I agree, it's really easy to make one single mistake and it's completely wrong after that. So when you're done with it and you can't look at the answer in the back of the book, let's say you work out a problem and it's an even problem, you don't know the answer in the back of the book, what you can do is you can multiply the A matrix with the inverse A matrix. When you multiply them together, you should get, yes, you guessed it, the identity matrix. If you don't, the answer is wrong. Another clue usually is when you make a small little error somewhere, the numbers start getting really bad, really bad fractions, and it just doesn't seem to go anywhere. And then typically you start to realize, maybe I made a mistake, I may, start over, I may want to start over again. But at any rate, that is how we do it. That's how we take a 3 by 3 matrix and find the inverse using the Gaussian method of elimination. And that's how it's done.